Starship 36 exploded on the test stand. Three seconds, gone. But why did the methane tank rupture without warning? The answer changes everything we thought we knew about Starship's design. This wasn't pilot error or bad weather. This was a structural failure that happened during the safest part of testing, on the ground with minimal fuel. If it can't handle a simple static fire, how can it survive space? The explosion destroyed months of work and pushed Flight 10 back indefinitely. But the real question isn't when the next launch will be. It's whether SpaceX needs to abandon the entire V2 design. Let's dive right in. The night everything changed. Picture this, 11.30 p.m. at Starbase, Texas. The massive floodlights illuminate Starship 36 like a steel cathedral against the dark sky. Engineers monitor their screens as liquid methane flows through the umbilical lines. Everything is routine, until it isn't. The prop load is 95% complete, just 10 more minutes to the static fire test. Then, without warning, without any sign of distress, the impossible happens. At exactly 11.47 p.m., Ship 36's methane tank doesn't just fail, it explodes from the inside out. The steel walls, designed to withstand the vacuum of space, rupture like tissue paper. In three seconds, $200 million of cutting-edge technology becomes a fireball that lights up the Texas night. But this isn't just another test failure. This is the moment that changes everything we thought we knew about Starship. What the camera caught. Frame-by-frame -frame analysis reveals something terrifying. Look closely at the footage and you'll see it. The ship's side bulges outward just before the explosion, not inward, like you'd expect from external pressure. Outward, from within. This tells us the tank was fighting a battle it couldn't win. Internal pressure building to catastrophic levels. The methane, despite being at minimal levels, was creating forces the structure simply couldn't contain. Think about a balloon being inflated past its limit. But instead of rubber stretching gradually, this was steel, brittle, unforgiving steel that held, held, then failed catastrophically in milliseconds. The energy release was astronomical. Debris launched thousands of feet into the air. The shockwave traveled for miles. People standing on nearby roads felt the heat on their faces from over a mile away. The pattern nobody wants to talk about. Here's where this story gets darker. Ship 36 wasn't the first V-2 starship to die violently. Ship 33, destroyed in flight. Ship 34, same fate. Ship 35, lost during testing. Every single V-2 starship has failed. Not one has completed its mission successfully. Not one has survived to be recovered and studied. This isn't bad luck anymore. This is a pattern. And patterns in engineering mean only one thing systematic design flaws that nobody wants to acknowledge. The V-2 design introduced the common dome structure, one bulkhead separating the methane and oxygen tanks. Revolutionary in theory, potentially deadly in practice. What if the very innovation SpaceX thought would make Starship better is actually making it more dangerous? The three-second apocalypse. The explosion sequence tells a story of cascading failure. First, the methane tank ruptures, we can see the initial blast point in the upper section. Then, milliseconds later, the oxygen tank joins the party. Liquid oxygen is what rocket engineers call an oxidizer. It makes everything burn faster, hotter, more violently. When those two tanks mix their contents in open air, they created something closer to a bomb than a fuel spill. The temperature at the blast center reached over 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to melt steel. Hot enough to turn sand into glass. Hot enough to be seen from orbit. But here's the truly chilling part. This happened with minimal fuel. The tanks were barely loaded for safety reasons. In a real launch, they'd be completely full. The explosion would have been unimaginable. Infrastructure Armageddon. The blast didn't stop at Ship 36. Like a stone thrown into a pond, the destruction rippled outward in waves of devastation. The tank farm, containing thousands of gallons of stored propellant, caught fire. Multiple buildings damaged, critical testing equipment destroyed. The specialized cranes that position these massive vehicles, gone. 
but the real loss might be invisible to most viewers. The test stand for Booster 18, SpaceX's next generation Super Heavy, was positioned nearby. Months of engineering work, millions in development costs, potentially reduced to twisted metal in seconds. The Can Crusher facility, where they validate new booster designs by literally crushing test articles, also in the blast radius, also likely destroyed. This isn't just about losing one ship. This is about losing the entire infrastructure needed to develop the next generation of rockets. The domino effect Starbase isn't just a launch site, it's the heart of Starship development. Every major test, every critical milestone, every breakthrough, it all happens here. Now that heart has been damaged, maybe fatally. Rebuilding this infrastructure won't just cost money. It will cost something SpaceX doesn't have, time. Every month of reconstruction delays not just Flight 10, but every mission that follows. NASA's Artemis program, delayed. Commercial satellite launches, on hold. The Mars timeline Elon promised, push back indefinitely. The cruel mathematics of aerospace development mean that a three-second explosion could set back human space exploration by years. The pressure paradox. So what actually caused the tank to fail? The physics are actually straightforward, but the implications are terrifying. Liquid methane exists at extremely low temperatures, around minus 260 degrees Fahrenheit. But even tiny amounts of warming create massive pressure increases. The tank walls must contain not just the weight of the fuel, but the explosive force of expanding gas. In the footage, you can see the frost lines on the ship's exterior. The oxygen tank shows a large frost pattern. It's full and stable. The methane tank shows a much smaller pattern. Minimal fuel, just as planned. Yet the methane tank is what failed, with less fuel under lower stress during the safest part of the test. This suggests the problem isn't with the fuel loading procedures, it's with the tank itself. The fundamental structure that every starship depends on might be flawed at the most basic level. The Timeline Massacre Remember when Mars missions were supposed to start in 2024, then 2026? Those dates already seemed optimistic. Now they seem like fantasy. Flight 10 was scheduled for June 29th, just eight days away when Ship 36 exploded. Now we're looking at months of delays, maybe a full year. But here's the twist that makes this even more painful. This might actually be the best possible outcome. Better to discover fatal flaws on the ground than during a crewed mission. Better to lose Ship 36 in Texas than lose astronauts in space. The explosion might have saved lives by revealing problems that could have been catastrophic during actual flight. But that cold comfort doesn't change the brutal reality. SpaceX's entire timeline just got demolished along with their test vehicle, the financial firestorm. Each starship cost roughly $200 million to build, but Ship 36's destruction represents far more than money. It represents years of development work, thousands of engineering hours, irreplaceable test data, all vaporized in three seconds. The real cost is competitive advantage. Every day Starship remains grounded, other companies close the gap. Blue Origin's New Glenn, Rocket Labs, Neutron, even traditional aerospace con The sabotage question. Within hours of the explosion, conspiracy theories began spreading. The timing seemed too convenient. Right before a crucial test, right when SpaceX was building momentum toward Flight 10. But the evidence tells a simpler, more disturbing story. This wasn't sabotage. This was physics. The tank failed because it couldn't handle the stresses it was designed for. No external enemy needed, just the laws of thermodynamics exposing a fatal design flaw. Sometimes the most mundane explanation is also the most terrifying. SpaceX didn't lose Ship 36 to enemies or bad luck. They lost it to their own engineering mistakes. The Survivor's Dilemma SpaceX now faces an impossible choice. They have two V-2 ships remaining, Ship 37 and Ship 38, both in various stages of completion. Do they risk flying these vehicles, knowing the V-2 design has a 100% failure rate? Do they ground the entire program and start over with V-3? Do they try to modify the existing ships with unknown risks and delays? Each option carries devastating consequences. Fly V-2 and risk another explosion that could destroy public confidence forever. Start over and admit that years of development were fundamentally flawed. 
modify existing ships and potentially make them even more dangerous. There are no good choices left, only degrees of catastrophe. The Mars dream deferred. Elon Musk's vision of making humanity multi-planetary depends entirely on Starship succeeding. Every explosion pushes that dream further into an uncertain future. The cruel irony is undeniable. The same ambition that drives SpaceX to attempt the impossible might be preventing them from achieving it. The rush to Mars, the pressure to innovate, the demand for faster progress, all create an environment where critical flaws get overlooked until it's too late. Ship 36's explosion wasn't just a test failure. It was a reality check, a reminder that space is hard, rockets are dangerous, and dreams of Mars mean nothing if you can't even test safely on Earth. The question now isn't when humans will reach Mars. It's whether Starship will ever be safe enough to carry them there. The bigger picture. So here we are. Ship 36 is gone. The V2 design is in question. And SpaceX's Mars timeline just got a brutal reality check. But maybe that's exactly what needed to happen. The deep truth. Every great leap in space exploration has been built on the ashes of failure. Apollo 1, Challenger, Columbia. Each tragedy taught us something we couldn't learn any other way. Ship 36's explosion might be SpaceX's most expensive lesson yet, but it could also be their most valuable. What happens next? The real test isn't whether SpaceX can build another rocket, it's whether they can build a better one. Whether they'll let this failure crush their ambition or forge it into something stronger. Your mission. What do you think? Should SpaceX stick with the V2 design and push through? Or is it time to admit defeat and start fresh with V3? Drop your thoughts below. Subscribe for more deep dives into the stories that shape our future among the stars. Because sometimes, the most important discoveries happen when everything goes wrong. This is Space Corps. Keep looking up. SpaceX just humiliated NASA. Starship 36 rolled out with heat shield technology that makes Dream Chaser look like a joke. 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what Starship handles while Dream Chaser struggles with basic missions. But here's what's really crazy. While NASA engineers spend days applying messy silicone, SpaceX folds ceramic felt in minutes. The shocking truth? Starship can lose tiles and keep flying. Dream Chaser? One missing tile could end the mission. How did SpaceX create a system so advanced it makes a $2 billion spacecraft obsolete? Let's dive right in. The discovery that shocked everyone. June 15th, everything changed. When Starship 36 rolled out at SpaceX's Massey test site, engineers across the world dropped their phones. Their jaws hit the floor. Why? Because this wasn't just another test vehicle. This was perfection. Every previous Starship had looked like Swiss cheese. S-33, missing tiles at the top. S-34, gaps everywhere on the bottom. They looked unfinished, incomplete. But S-36, every single tile in place. This wasn't testing anymore. This was SpaceX saying, we're ready for Mars. But what they found between those tiles Nobody saw this come. The problem that kills spacecraft, 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what hits your spacecraft during re-entry. Hot enough to melt copper in seconds. Hot enough to turn steel into liquid. And here's the terrifying part. It's not the big tiles that kill you. It's the tiny gaps between them. Those gaps are death traps. Super, superheated plasma gases squeeze through like liquid fire. One unsealed gap, your billion-dollar spacecraft becomes a shooting star. For decades, everyone used the same solution, RTV silicone. NASA uses it, Boeing uses it, even SpaceX used it, until now. But here's what nobody talks about. RTV silicone is a nightmare. You mix base compound with curing agent. Perfect 1-5% ratio. One drop too much, start over. Then you wait and wait, and wait. Days, sometimes weeks. Temperature has to be perfect. 
humidity has to be perfect. One mistake during curing, the silicone fails when you need it most. During re-entry, at 2,500 degrees, when failure means death, SpaceX engineers stared at this process and asked one simple question. What if we could fix this in minutes, not days? The breakthrough nobody expected White felt. That's SpaceX's secret weapon. Sounds ridiculous, right? Like something from a craft store? It's not. These aren't regular felt pieces. They're precision-engineered ceramic fibers cut into perfect hexagons that fit between tiles like a jigsaw puzzle designed by geniuses. Watch how they install it. No mixing chemicals. No waiting for curing. No complex equipment. Just fold. Tuck.